Hey guys, Dr. Alex the Punch Doctor here, and today we're going to look at Deontay Wilder's punch mechanics. Deontay loves his big one too, however I will say that his other punch mechanics are pretty sound. He's not the most impressive boxer, however he has a huge advantage over the vast majority of his opponents because of his athleticism, genetics including athletic frame and joint integrity, his height and his reach. In this video I'm going to do a quick recap on how power is generated in a punch, a quick review of the anatomy involved, including the kinetic chains, and then I'm gonna look at some of Deontay's punches. Now, when it comes to the punch, I separate the punch into four distinct phases. Load, explode, accelerate, and follow through. The load phase is a loading of the tissues, either through lowering your center of gravity or through movement, sometimes both. This stretches the muscles slightly, which primes them for contraction just like you might dip down quickly before you jump or bounce a weight in the weight room. This phenomenon is known as the stretch shortening cycle and is utilized in almost every athletic movement. It's a cycle of quick stretch to load elastic energy into the muscle and then a release of this elastic energy with a contraction. The goal of the load phase is to stretch the muscles we're then going to contract in the explode phase. We are primarily stretching the muscles in our hips and legs to then contract and rotate our hips. However, we can also stretch some of our crossbody chains simultaneously, which I'll get to in just a second. Once you load your legs, you explode or contract these quickly stretched muscles to power your hips into rotation. This rotation stretches your crossbody chains and creates a possibility of another stretch shortening cycle in these crossbody chains. The crossbody chains consist of the spiral line and the front functional line. The spiral line includes the internal obliques of the side of the hip moving back, the external obliques of the hip moving forward, the external obliques then connect to the serratus anterior which goes into the shoulder blade. The front functional line connects the abs to the pec which crosses the shoulder joint. These chains can either be stretched through hip rotation by itself or with the load phase through lowering your center of gravity or torso counter rotation prior to the primary contraction that powers the punch. As a side note, a good way to feel the crossbody stretch and contraction is to use a landmine of the gym to do a barbell punch. Keep your hips pointed forward. When the weight comes down, it'll want to rotate your hips. However, you can do this as a plyometric exercise to resist that hip rotation. Keep your hips pointed forward by maintaining tension in your posterior chain. That's your glutes, hamstring, and your calf. As the weight comes down and you're using your legs to resist the rotation the weight wants to create, it will stretch your crossbody chains, which you can then contract to power the weight forward like a spring or a slingshot. So, your hips rotate. Stretch the crossbody chains, which then contract, which stretches the arm line, which can then contract as well. This is the acceleration phase, where the cascade of stretch shortening cycles accelerates the movement in your body to maximize fist velocity at impact. Phase four is the follow through, where you grab your fist at impact and then transfer your weight into and through your target. Grabbing your fist will tense your muscles at impact and allow a more solid and stable weight transfer. Other considerations as far as punching power include the amount of weight that you're transferring, and the amplitude of the follow through. This might sound kind of complicated, and my description is very detailed. However, I have a very simple program that can teach you exactly how to maximize your punching power using these principles. You don't need to know all the technical jargon or the anatomy. My program is very logical and simple, and takes you from A to Z to retrain your body and your movement patterns to use the four punch phases, your kinetic chains, and the stretch shortening cycle to maximize your punching power. If you'd like to learn more, go to howtopunchharder.com. Let's get into the clips. Let's take a look at Deontay Wilder versus Sergey Lahovich. So this fight is pretty quick, and Deontay finishes it with his specialty here, a couple one-twos. Now, you'll, you won't be able to see Deontay's hips create torque or rotate before the torso in this view because his trunks are kind of high. However, you will be able to see him in this view. So we'll start from the beginning. He throws a 1-2. First throws it with a, a hook that follows sort of 
jab mechanics. Not the best hook, just a swatting hook. Being used to set up the right hand, which misses. And then he steps a couple times, gets his feet back under him, throws the jab. Weight's coming down. And you can see he's planting his right foot right here. And look at his belt line. You'll see his hips move just slightly before his torso, and they move relative to his torso. So he's just that motion right there is enough to stretch the crossbody kinetic chains, which he can then contract on to power the rest of the motion. His arm looks like it starts to accelerate a little bit early here, so it looks a little bit awkward. However, he does land with a very solid impact that puts Sergey down and ends the fight. Here's Wilder versus Nick Firtha, and I want to show you this, this wild shot that Wilder throws. Now he follows it up with a few crisp shots that puts Firtha down. Uh, there's not a whole lot that I can show you with these. There's a little bit of hip movement before he gets his torso moving here. Weight comes down. Torso sort of begins, you can see the hips begin to move a little bit before the torso. Torso starts moving right here. So you know, he's creating torque right here. But I just wanted to really show you the wild shot that he throws. This is an athletic little move as he's moving backwards. His weight is naturally on his left leg here. And he pushes his left hip forward, stretching those chains and the arm. And you can see the cascade of events here. Quite, quite nice athletic little move from a position that Firth is open and not expecting it. Nice little punch. I like that. Here's another clip of Wilder versus Firtha. And you're going to see him throw a left hook, which is very fast and has good mechanics. And you can see him start to move his hips right here, rotating his hips. So that's quite significant movement really stretching those crossbody chains because those hips are moving independent from the torso you can see the torso staying still and those hips moving relative to the torso so that's loading the crossbody kinetic chains and then they pick up the contraction right about here along with the arm so now everything is turning and look how the fist speeds up look how the arm speeds up There's a, the weight transfer past the center line and a follow through. I showed this clip earlier in the beginning of my video. And you can see how fast that fist gets. So significant acceleration here. Very fast. So good hip torque, good stretching of the crossbody chains. Huge hip rotation right here to stretch those chains. Everything comes after it. Big impact, weight transfer, and then follow through. Now, a lot of times, Deontay can be wild with his shots, and they aren't always the best. However, this one was quite good. Now, here's a long-range uppercut by Deontay. And he's kind of far away. His guard is down. But Firth is in no position to respond with a punch, so it's no big deal. And you'll see his arm come back, his weight's coming down, arm is coming back. And you'll see his hips move again before his torso. You can see it right there. And there's a couple frames where it's moving. Now right here, he's going to pick up the crossbody chain contraction. His arm is still lagging somewhat. But those crossbody chains are now carrying that tension. And his arm is going to start to move right here. So now the arm chain is involved. So remember, it's hips and then crossbody chain and then arm. And the arm begins to contract, everything accelerates. It does get through with the impact and there's follow through there, just carrying the momentum of his punch trajectory and his body that gets through. Not the most concussive shot, just wanted to show you how he throws it. 
Here's another view of the uppercut where you can really see the independent rotation between the hips and the torso. So you'll see the hips start rotating right there. And his torso is largely stationary. It's coming down, but it's not really rotating as the hips are. Right about here is when it starts to rotate. So hips, torso, arm is still, the elbow is still extending right there. So it's still picking up the stretch. And then it starts the contraction right about here. And you can see that elbow approximate and everything is moving up now. So weight's coming down. That hip starts turning relative to the torso. The arm is still being stretched. Weight's coming down, hips start turning. Torso starts turning. Arm is still extending a bit in the elbow. That picks up the tension. Now the tension is being maintained in the chains through the rest of this motion, creating stability and involving the entire body in the punch. And this is the beginning, well, it's not the beginning of the end for Firtha, it's like the end of the end. Because the next punch finishes the fight. And this is, not, this is not a good example, really, of hip torque. When these guys take a big step, like Deontay's doing here, plus when he has his trunks up high, it's hard to see movement in his hips in context with his torso, just because it's obscured by the belt and the fact that he's taking a big step. However, this is obviously a big punch. He lands with some good impact, despite being somewhat of a glancing blow. But there is good impact, and he follows through and it's the end of the fight. Like I said, when these guys take a big step like Deontay's doing here, it makes it difficult to really pinpoint hip rotation individually from torso rotation, especially since he has his trunks up high. He does follow through with what is a, a fight ending punch. Here's another example of Deontay's big one-two that he likes to throw. Now, I will say these fights with Tyson Fury is a good example of a much more skilled boxer beating a much more athletic guy. Now, big one-two and then the hook to finish, not finish things off, but to kind of add a punctuation to the knockdown. And, of course, Fury gets up and fights back after this and they end up having a draw. I want to make a point here to show you Deontay extending his hip. So his leg is moving backwards relative to his hip. That's extending the hip, basically. That's what the movement is called. Now, if he has any push off at all, which it looks like he's pushing off from a foot here, there's a quick push off from the side of the foot. Naturally, creating that sort of extension and pushing the hip forward inevitably causes stretch in the abs. And since it's rotating, inevitably, just by virtue of the rotation and the hip going forward, it's stretching the crossbody chains. There's no two ways about it. If you're pushing the hip into rotation, you are stretching those muscles. And they have to contract or else you're gonna be bending backwards, right? It's gonna create spinal extension, lumbar extension, and to combat that, you have to contract those muscles. So despite you not being able to, being able to see it, it's just a natural pattern of movement. If you extend the spine in order for Deontay's upper body to maintain balance over the pelvis, those muscles have to contract turning the torso, rotating the torso, and then everything else will follow behind it. So despite not being able to see it, knowing the sequence of events that are taking place here, instead of it moving all at once, like some linear examples on YouTube, where the hip is moving in lockstep with the arm, he is pushing his hips into rotation first, causing stretch in the crossbody chains, whether you can see it or not, that is contracting almost as a mechanism to maintain his balance over his pelvis because his body is not leaning back relative to his hips, forcing contraction in those crossbody chains, which turns the torso, arm follows behind it, makes impact, and he follows through. You'll see his weight come down right here just for a beat before he pushes off right there. So 
you'll see his weight comes down. And then from this low position, it's rotating forward. And right about here is when everything picks up the contraction. And there's a big torso movement. Of course, the arm accelerates behind that, makes impact, and follows through. So his hip is moving forward while he's coming down because of his momentum moving forward. However, it comes down and then up and forward. And right here, everything picks up the contraction to accelerate, make impact, and follow through. Let's take a look at the Robert Hellenius knockout, which some of you guys have been asking for me to cover. Now, at first glance, it looks like you know something incredible. Like, how did this guy create so much power in the position he was in, right? And I get it. It looks bizarre. However, when we look closely, you'll see that he does exactly what I'm talking about. The first thing I want to show you from this overhead view is Deontay's hips start to rotate. And look at his legs and his hips. Look at his trunks. You'll see his right leg start to move inward as his arm is coming back. So see that hip start to come forward? Well, that's going to stretch his cross-body kinetic chains right there. And then you'll see him contract on him in the next view right here. So here we are in a similar time frame from the overhead view. And look at his arm coming back and his trunk start to move to the right. And look at his obliques. You can see the striations there. You can see the lines that the oblique fibers follow. Now you don't see it right here. As it comes back, he contracts that oblique. And look at his pec too. The upper fibers of the pec are, they have tension because of where his arm is. Now look at the tension spread to his lower pecs, right there. And now everything picks up the contraction. So it's contracting, now it's starting to move, and it accelerates. And all those muscles are under tension right now, propelling that arm forward and allowing it to accelerate until impact. And notice that his shoulder does not move backwards at all. Obviously, he's got a very athletic frame, some great genetics. So all that power that he's creating with the torque of his hip rotation, contraction right there of his obliques, which you can feel by doing the barbell exercise that I showed you, the barbell punch. Everything starts contracting and moving forward. And all those chains have tension in them to involve his entire body in the impact. And you can see, obviously, it bounces his head back, you know, boink, and that's, it's quite a significant impact. So hopefully that makes sense. We'll watch it one more time. Deontay leans back on the ropes, and you see from the overhead view that his hips go forward as his arm is coming back. Right there, his obliques begin to contract. Right there, his pec begins to contract. The tension is remaining in those chains as they, it begins to accelerate. So it's accelerating the contraction, you know, just like throwing a ball until he makes impact with a solid platform and a good follow through. I mean, follow through enough. He's not moving that far through him, but, you know, obviously enough. Ended the fight. All right, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe. It'll do a lot to help me get the word out and help educate other people. I think my videos have some good information, so hopefully you agree. And if you aren't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Additionally, if you'd like to learn how to maximize your own punching power using the principles that I talk about, including the stretch shortening cycle and your kinetic chains, torque, acceleration, and the four punch phases. Check out my program called the Power Punching Blueprint, and you can buy it today at howtopunchharder.com. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.